hello and welcome to the last day of High Wire. I hope you've had fun learning about Joseph, seeing the ups and downs in his life and how trusting in God and being faithful to him delivers us through all those things. Today we get to see the amazing conclusion to his story and if you haven't heard it before, it's going to be awesome. But before we get into the lesson and before we get into worship, let's check in one last time with our friends, the Popsicle Pals. How do you get a frozen treat with the perfect flavor? Since the chilling years of the Ice Age, man has been on a quest to find the world's greatest frozen delicacy. In 1940, the freezer was invented by a man named Westi Bach. And soon after, his deranged father, Papa Sickle, had invented what we know today as the Popsicle. This is Jonah Gillespie. With a PhD in freezer treat technology and a minor in business, he has over 25 years of Popsicle making experience. And this is Dane. They are on the adventure to find the world's greatest popsicle. This is the Popsicle Pals. Hey everybody, welcome to our last day of Popsicle Pals, where everything and everything is popsicle. Now, just because it's our last day doesn't mean you need to be sad, because today we've got the most epic hmm. popsicles we've ever made. We got something so big in store, you guys are gonna really love it. I believe so, yep. Mm -hmm. So, we uh, sat down about, was it three days ago? Yeah, something like three that. Three days ago, and we uh, started prepping for this, uh, this, this special treat for you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's been a lot of time, a lot of effort, and I think it's gonna be really cool. Yes, we're really pushing the limits of what's what is and what isn't popsicle. All right. Well, without further ado, let's go check this thing out. Yes. of grape and uh, cherry popsicle. I'm telling you, these are gonna be the greatest popsicles ever. Go for Dane, it. Dane, how is it? 10 out of 10. Oh yes, 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 definitely 10. So grapey. Again, 40 pounds of popsicle. Do you guys think you could eat 40 pounds of popsicle? Well, my good friend buddy, uh, Dane here, uh -huh. he's gonna try. I can do this, mine, uh, Oh, God. oh my goodness, mine has a joke on it. What? What is a musician's favorite pastry? The answer is somewhere inside there, so he's gonna have to eat through to figure it out. Let's do this. <laughs>
a drummer. Hmm. Go figure. All right. Well, that's it for Popsicle Pals. I hope you all have had a great time. And I hope you always remember that anything is Popsicle. Hmm. getting ready to head into the most important part of Joseph's story and this is why I said at the beginning of the week this is one of the most important lessons in the Bible one of the most important characters and life lessons that we can pull from this story it's amazing of everything that's inside of here so let's see how it concludes today to wrap up our story this week we're gonna go in our Bible and remember if we look in the first book in the Bible Genesis Today's uh, story is going to come from chapters 42 through 45. So look for the big number 42 through 45 if you're looking it up in your Bible. Um, if we think back to what we've learned so far this week, we started out with Joseph and his family. He had a dream where his brothers bowed down to him. 
His brothers were jealous of him. He ended up in Egypt as a slave. And he went from being in prison to the second in command of all of Egypt. Where we left off in our last story, the seven good years have happened. They've collected a lot of food. And now there's a famine across not just Egypt, but all the other surrounding countries, including the country where Joseph's family is, is living. So as we get into the story, Joseph's brothers and father and all of their families are together. They're in Israel and they don't have enough food. They need food. And Joseph's father, Jacob, hears there's food in Egypt. So he sends his sons off to Egypt to get some food. They arrive in front of Joseph and they bow down to him out of respect since he's the second in command. And Joseph remembers his dream of his brothers bowing down to him. So he recognizes them. They don't recognize him. He starts questioning them a lot. He accuses them of being spies. He's very hard on them and asking him a lot of questions. He's finding out information. So he's finding out, is his father still alive? Is Benjamin still around? And as he's questioning them, they tell him that they're 12 brothers. 10 of them are there. One brother is gone, and the other brother is with his father. So Joseph gives them their grain that they've come for, but he tells them, um, you can't just go back. I'm going to first test you to see if you guys are correct. So he puts them in prison for three days. And then he says, I'm going to let all of you go back except for one. He's going to stay in prison here. And I want you to bring your other brother back to prove that you're not spies and that you really have a younger brother. So they go back to their father. And they find out that what Joseph's done is taken the money that they paid for the grain and he put it back into the grain sacks. He had his, his guys who loaded up the grain for him, put it back in the grain sacks. So they have their money back. They have this grain and they tell their father all of what's happened. And their father's not happy with them because they told him about Benjamin, but they said we didn't have a choice. He just questioned us so much. And they said, the only way we can go back is we have to take Benjamin. His father said, Benjamin's my only son from, from Rachel. I've lost Joseph. There's no way you're taking Benjamin back. Sure enough, time continues on. They get hungry again because all of their foods run out. The only place that they can get food from is Egypt. So their father said, you have to go back. And the, the brothers tell him, we can't go back without Benjamin. Jacob says, I'm not sending Benjamin. But finally, he decides, I have to send Benjamin because we really, really need food. The brothers promise they will bring Benjamin back and keep him safe. So they go back to Joseph. They have Benjamin with them. Their brother that's in jail is out of jail now with them. And, and Joseph invites them over to um, eat with them. And while they're eating, he lines them up in the order that they were born. How would they know that? The brothers look around, figure out we're in the right order. Joseph feeds them. Joseph gives more food to Benjamin than all the other brothers while, the, uh, while they're eating. Um, and Joseph also has to excuse himself during part of this because um, he gets emotional seeing his brothers and especially uh, his, his youngest brother, Benjamin. So it's time to go back. Joseph still hasn't told him who he is. So he sends them back again. And this time, in addition to putting the money in the, in the bags of grain, they also put Joseph's special cup in Benjamin's bag. And in Benjamin's bag, um, with that cup, as they go back, he then sends his manager off to them. And the manager stops him and says, why have you stolen my master's cup? They said, we didn't steal him. We'll come back and be your slave if any of us did that. They search the bags, find it in Benjamin's bag, and the brothers are brought back to Joseph. Finally, Joseph, after talking with them, they basically offer themselves to be slaves instead of Benjamin because their father would be so disappointed if they didn't bring Benjamin back with them. Joseph is finally breaks down. He has to excuse himself. He comes back out to them and tells them, um, I'm Joseph, your brother. 
And as you can imagine, they were shocked and they were scared. Here's the brother that they sold as a slave. Now he's the second highest in command of all of Egypt. What's he going to do to him? Joseph goes down, he embraces them, he talks with them, and he's just so happy to see them. And they finally you know, relax a little bit and enjoy their time with Joseph. Joseph also tells him, you have to go back and bring your father back, bring our father back, bring your families back. I can take care of you in Egypt. I have some really good land that I can use. Pharaoh finds out about this and he tells him the same thing. Take carts, take whatever you need to bring your family back. Bring what you want to, don't bring what you don't want to. We'll provide you the best of Egypt uh, to take care of you. We're so happy that you know, you're Joseph's family. We want you in Egypt and we will take care of you. So as we look back over the story, Joseph, again, started out the favored son. He ends up a slave. He becomes the second in command of all of Egypt, and he's able to take care of his family through this famine. So his brothers meant to harm Joseph, but God meant all of this hardship that Joseph went through for good. Okay. Let me just say, here's why I love the story of Joseph. We see his life constantly going up and down, up and down. Favorite to slavery, Potiphar's house to prison, to Pharaoh's right hand man, to seeing his brothers, to seeing God's plan. Think about it. Joseph's life constantly changed, right? Up and down, up and down. But yet there was one thing that was steady, was his trust and faith in God. It never changed. It never dipped. He stayed true to God. And because of that, he got to see the plan that God had in, for his life all along. He got to look back on his life and see why he went through the things he went through. And instead of being angry and bitter and mad at his brothers, he was able to look at the situation in a whole different light. He got to see how God put Joseph in each part of those spots in his life for a reason. So that Joseph could save his family. So that Joseph could be a, a, a blessing to his family. And not just to his family, but to all of his people and to the whole country of Egypt. And in our lives, guys, you're going to have lots of ups and lots of downs. And I pray and I hope that your faith in God is always and your trust in God is always that straight line. It's always consistent. And I know in my life I face lots of ups and lots of downs. And I've not always been perfect, but I've always tried to do my best to make sure that my trust in God stays the same. And when I do that and I've gone through some tough times or even through some good times, I can look back and say, that's why God had me go through that. That's why things went so well. And it helps me to remember to stay faithful to God in the future, regardless of the ups and the downs that I have in my life. We can trust God no matter what. We should stay faithful to Him always with our life. So let's pray. Father, thank you for this time you've given us again to come and to see the story of Joseph. And I pray that we keep our faith and our trust in you steady throughout our whole lives, that when we go through the highs and the lows in our lives, the ups and the downs, that we do it with you in mind, that we do it with an eye to what you're wanting to teach us, what you're wanting to show us, and how you are leading us through. Father, I am just so thankful for all that you've done for us and how much you love us, and it's in your son's name that we pray, amen. All right, we got one more craft to do today. And Dane is going to lead us through our memory verse one last time. So today you guys are going to need some Play-Doh or some Silly Putty or anything you can mold together. And you're going to be creating something that kind of stresses you out. So for me, school really stresses me out. So I kind of created a piece of paper with a plus and a minus sign on it. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to squish it all together because I'm going to give it to God instead of just worrying about it myself. So now. I'm squishing it all together and I'm going to give it all to God. And that's what I want you guys to do after you create it as well.
right, we're here, day four of our memory verse challenge. All right, we have been talking about what verse? Proverbs 3, 5, right? Proverbs 3, 5. Hopefully by now you are a pro. Hopefully you have said it before you've gone to bed. You've said it when you've woken up. You've uh, told it to either a parent or a brother or sister or a friend. And now we're going to try to read it together again, okay? Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. All right, I want you to say it uh, on your own right now, out loud. All right, what verse is it again, guys? It's Proverbs 3, 5, right? Proverbs 3, 5. So hopefully by now you have it memorized. What I want you to do tonight is before you go to bed, try not to look at your notes. Try not to look into the Bible and try to say Proverbs 3, 5 to either your brother or sister or your mom and dad. And then you go to bed and wake up. I want you to try it again without looking, but if you have to look, that's totally okay, all right? And so now that this is our last day of reading this scripture, what I want you to do is any time that you feel like you might be, um, you might be in trouble, any time that you might be sad, any time you might be worried about what might be happening in the future, right? If you're ever uncertain in times of trouble, remember Proverbs 3, 5, right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. And why, guys, why don't we depend on our own understanding? It's because God, He knows so much more. And God, He has such a big plan for you, right? Our job is to trust in Him and to continue learning His Word and praying together so that we can live as His children, right? Because we can trust in a God who loves us. All right, I hope you had fun with Abby's craft today. It's not just something you can do today, but it's something you can do throughout your entire life. I know for me, I always carried around a uh, silly putty when I was in grade school, and I kept that little egg with putty inside of it in my pocket, and whenever I had a few moments, I would pull it out and I'd play with it, but what a great reminder to have, right? When things, when something's bothering us, when we're upset about something, we're scared about something, we're afraid of something, that we can pull that little piece of putty out of our pocket, right? And we can form it into what it is and say, God, I'm going to give this to you. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. Squish it and move on with life. What a great reminder now and in the future. I hope you all have had a great time this week. We're going to worship together one last time. And then I hope I can get to see you all soon. Until then, have a great time. See you later.
Yeah.